Gas prices are hitting drivers hard, but they aren't the only ones feeling the pain. United Airlines says it will ground its uh, low-cost airline named TED and cut up to 1,600 jobs. This in an attempt to cover fuel costs, which have risen 82% in the last year. They'll also retire about 100 planes, including all of its Boeing 737 jets. United shocked Wall Street a few weeks ago, posting a half-billion-dollar loss in the first quarter of 08. Let's stay with the airlines. Uh, you know, we're all uh, going to the airport now, having our luggage weighed, uh, but what if you step on the scale and you are a little overweight? So you might have to pay a little more. How do you like that? That idea is actually being floated around. You know, I get, we just did the story, I get the airline industry is hurting financially, but you're going to embarrass me now just to squeeze a few dollars out of me? Is this really going to happen? Join me to talk about it. Robert Mann, he's an aviation consultant who says, Basically, get used to it. This is the future of flying. Robert, say it isn't so. We're really heading in this direction, huh? Well, time for that diet. Maybe. maybe. Bottom line. There you go. Uh, we like common sense talk. Come on, though, really. I mean, and I hear you on that. The, the airline industry has to make some money. They're looking at all different avenues. But people are going to be crying discrimination. They're going to lose more in lawsuits than they're going to make in fees, right? Well, I think there are some practical challenges, but you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is it, it takes twice as much energy to, to carry twice as much weight any particular distance, and airlines have to start to you know, recognize that and recover it. And one way to do that is the way the air freight industry has always done it, which is to sell transportation by space and weight. Okay, b before we take calls, and I know that people are waiting on the line, our number one eight seven seven tell hln Real quick, Robert, uh, how are they going to decide that? I mean, is it, if you're a guy, it's one... Seventy-five saying anything above that you're paying, or uh, well, what, for, what, you, how sure. practically could you even do that? For, for example, when, when airlines do what's called a weight and balance calculation to determine how many passengers and how much freight they can put on an aircraft, they assume on average that every passenger, including their bags, weighs 220 pounds. So that's that's kind of a reference number that's used industry wide. So man or woman, 220 is kind of our benchmark if this actually goes forward. Well, so including, you're possibility. In, including bags, right. Okay. Including bags. All right, let's get to some calls. Rebecca in Alabama. Rebecca, good or bad idea? Hey, I think it's a great idea. You know why? Tell me. Because um, I've been looking for a good way to quit my day job, and that's totally discrimination. I'm a large woman. I can carry my weight in yours, too. And... Okay. Um, Frankly, I think they should charge me so I can go ahead and sue them and get my um, living for the rest of my life. But, by the way, maybe they should take off a couple hundred pounds of those peanuts, and that might save them some Amen, gas. Rebecca. Amen. I love <laughs> and then, Rebecca. And then they can stop uh, letting people sh bring back Puerto Rican rum. They can ship it. They can ship it. Uh, UPS Federal All right. Express. Rebecca's got a lot of great insight there. We're going to have to have Rebecca back as a guest, but I love the peanut idea. Well, yeah. let's, get, let's get back to, uh, uh, thanks again, by, by the for the call, Rebecca. Robert, what about that? It, we just talked about it. Discrimination. People yeah, are going to be well, crying foul, and you're going to have some trouble. Sure. I mean, I, I think, you know, Southwest, for example, has had, uh, had a challenge to their, uh, you know, uh, large passenger policy where if you don't fit in a seat, you have to buy two. But I, I, as far as I know, they ultimately won that case. All right. Let's, uh, let's get some more calls. Michael in Alaska. Michael, good or bad idea? Michael, you there? Hello. Michael, go ahead. Yeah. Are you there? Oh, yeah. Good or bad idea? What do you think? Oh, I think it's a great idea. Uh, my wife and I have been discussing this ever since the airlines have begun to charge for extra baggage. Uh, if, I, if I ship a package someplace, I pay by the pound. To make me pay extra for somebody else's package that might weigh 50% more, discriminates against me. Wow. It doesn't discriminate against the person with the heavier package. So you're sympathetic to the airlines. You're, you're willing to pay a few extra bucks. Uh, I, Robert, you know what I'm, where I'm going with this. Come on, are we getting to the point where it's just going to be skinny rich people that are going to be able to afford to fly? <laughs> well, I, actually, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm kind of a proponent of this, of this idea, and I probably would pay more. Uh, but I think, you know, ultimately fares are going to go up by 20% no matter what happens. So, uh, you know, a lot of leisure customers, independent of how this fare by weight issue sorts out, are going to be priced out of the marketplace. All right, let's get to some more calls. Uh, Shanna in uh, Georgie. Shanna, what do you think of this idea? Hello. Hi. Shanna, what do you got? I'm actually kind of disgusted um, that the airlines would use discrimination as a way to make a profit. If the airlines can't afford their fuel like the rest of us Americans at this point, then they need to take it up with their 
an oil company or their government, but they're not taking it out on the consumers that keep them in business. That's a ridiculous route to go. Excellent point there. I mean, that, that not, you know, in reading up on this story, a lot of people say this is a losing uh, proposition. Uh, real quick, Robert, I want to hit on some things that airlines are doing uh, to kind of save some money. Uh, we've talked about it, adding baggage fees. Flying slower can save some cash. Uh, using lighter dishes. Uh, uh, cutting down on the number of seats. Isn't that enough? I mean, isn't this a, a place you just don't want to go if you're the airline industry? Well, at this point, the industry is slowly liquidating. They're, none of them are making any money. None of them have any prospect for making any money at these energy prices. So in addition to fares having to go up, I think they're going to have to look at different ways of pricing their product. And, and pricing it according to the way it generates cost is certainly one of those ways. So you don't really see things turning around in the airline industry? Um, in the short term, no, I don't, unless energy prices uh, make a dramatic uh, drop, and that's not anything that uh, that the forward market uh, suggests is going to happen. All right, let's get some more calls. Uh, Jack in Phoenix. Jack's not there. How about uh, Charlotte in Phoenix? Phoenix representing. Oh. Uh, Charlotte, what do you think? Um, I don't agree that it's... Uh discriminative. I think people can have control of their own health if they want to. Uh, people aren't too happy. Um, there, is an, there is an energy crisis right now. The prices are going up. It's going to stay up. Um, I myself used to be obese. Um, I don't like right now that I've lost 220 pounds. Nice job, I like to be comfortable. Thank you very much. I like to be comfortable in my seat. I don't want someone sit, uh, heavy sitting next to me uh, where their uh, body is scraping up against mine. Um, if they got a problem and their seat belt doesn't sit, uh, uh, lose weight. Do what I did. Well, let me, uh, Charlotte, were, were you okay? Would you have been okay when you were obese? Paying more money? Would you have really been okay with that? Uh, it was my fault that I was obese. If I had to pee more because I need another seat or I need an extension on a belt, that was my own fault. Hmm. Well, again, I don't, I don't look at it as, you know, uh, so much discrimination because it's not like your gender or your race where you can't control it. Uh, your obesity or your overweightness can't be controlled by you well, if you want to. Charlotte, again, congratulations to you. Uh, you have defeated the battle of the bold, so you're an inspiration to us all, but I think for some it's not that easy, and I think it's still going to be a, a powder keg discrimination issue for the airline industry. Robert Mann, appreciate your time and your insights, and uh, as always, we appreciate your phone calls. Always love hearing from you.